In these clips, we see P-51 Mustangs from the 7th Fighter Command attacking Japanese ground targets with 5-inch HVAR air-to-ground rockets. The intent of this video is to deep dive the rocket's characteristics, usage, and combat effectiveness. Most belligerents in World War II developed ground-to-air and some air-to-air -air rockets. The channel has deep dived some of these World War II rockets in these videos. The U.S. developed many rocket types during World War II, as seen in these images from a July 1945 War Department technical manual titled Rockets. This video will focus on the late war, most effective 5-inch HVAR, which is shaded here. The rocket is 5 inches in diameter, and HVAR stands for High Velocity Aircraft Rocket. Its nickname is Holy Moses or the Caltech Rocket. These rockets were around twice the speed of the rocket it replaced, the 5 inch FVAR. FVAR stands for Forward Firing Aircraft Rocket. Higher speeds gave the rocket a flatter trajectory, making it more accurate. These images show the HVAR mounted on fighters or in action. The earlier, slower F-bars were developed by placing a 5-inch warhead on a 3.5-inch rocket motor, like seen in these images. This page from a May 1945 United States Navy bomb disposal document titled Rockets and Fuses lists characteristics of the 5-inch H-bar. The rocket is 69 inches in length and 5 inches in diameter. The weight equates to 140 pounds. When used with the Mark 159 base views, the rocket will penetrate 3.75 feet of reinforced concrete or 2.75 feet if the strike is offset at a 30 degree obliquity angle. When used with the Mark 149 nose views, the rocket will cause serious damage to 1.6 inches of armor under certain flight conditions. If the Mark 149 nose views is replaced with a steel plug, it can penetrate 1 inches of armor prior to detonation. This page shows the thickness of a Panzer VI Tiger tank's armor from a July 1943 intelligence bulletin. The upper turret's armor thickness equates to 1 inch, which the rocket may be able to damage or penetrate depending on the strike angle and the fuse used. Additional characteristics of the rocket are shown on this page from a 1945 United States Strategic Bombing Survey report titled Armaments in the Air War 1939 to 1945. The rocket's maximum velocity equates to 1,350 feet per second or Mach 1.21. The launch speed should be added to this speed to calculate the rocket's true airspeed. The explosive fill weight equates to 8.2 pounds. This image from a May 1945 Air Force's training manual number 22 document titled Fighter Gunnery Rocket Firing Dive Bombing outlines a cutaway of the 5 inch HVAR. The Mark 149 nose fuse is located here. This may be replaced with a steel nose cap. The fuse detonates the warhead's 8.2 pounds of explosive fill located here. The Mark 159 base fuse is located here. The mounting suspension lugs are here. The rocket motor's 24 pound cursiform propellant is located here. The propellant's cross section is shaped like a thick plus sign. This image shows a close up view of the rocket's nozzles, electrical pigtail connector, and cursiform cross-sectional propellant shape from a December 1944 ordnance publication titled 5-inch rocket. Characteristics and a cutaway of the Mark 149 nose fuse are shown on this image from a 1960 Bureau of Naval Weapons document titled Aircraft Rockets. The fuse starts the warhead's detonation train on impact. The Mark 149 was the only nose fuse adopted by the 5-inch HVAR, as discussed on this 1946 National Defense Research Committee document titled Rocket and Underwater Ordnance. Proximity fuses were considered, but not used. The Mark 149 nose fuse can be replaced with an armor-piercing plug for attacking armored targets, as seen on this page from an October 1944 impact document. A solid nose plug is shown on this image. Characteristics and a cutaway of the Mark 159 base fuse, which resides inside the rocket's warhead body, are shown on this page. The fuse is armed 0.01 seconds at the end of propellant burn. This fuse is roughly the same as the Mark 157 fuse, except the time delay after target impact to detonation was reduced from 0.02 seconds to 0.015 seconds. The pilot can opt to have the warhead detonate at impact or with a 0.015 second time delay by replacing the Mark 149 nose fuse with a steel plug. A semi-armor piercing nose plug was used for attacking heavy structures, tanks, and armored vehicles. This allows a warhead penetrating time delay of 0.015 seconds prior to detonation of the Mark 159 fuse. The Mark 149 impact nose fuse works best for targets like exposed flak batteries, thin skin vehicles, and trains. The detonating warhead fragments of near misses would cause damage to these structures and or personnel. 
The rocket's low burn time of 1.2 seconds produces a slower rocket acceleration but higher velocity. The maximum effective range equates to 1,000 yards, which is well beyond the 400 yards effective range of a fighter's machine guns, as discussed in these channel's videos. The advantages and disadvantages of rockets are listed on this page from a 1944 Aberdeen Proving Ground document titled Rockets and Launchers All Types. The advantages include no recoil. Rockets mounted on aircraft do not require beefed up hard points to take the firing loads. Accelerations are controlled by tweaking the propellant quantity, burn time, and nozzle shape. Launchers can be cheap, lightweight, and in some cases jettisoned. The disadvantages include nozzle flames and hot gases need to be taken into account. Decrease in accuracy as compared to guns. A fighter's guns, rockets, and bombs will all have different ballistics. Bullets have a relatively flat trajectory given their high muzzle speed as seen in this image. HVAR rockets are around one half the bullet speed. The rocket's stabilizing fin will help align the rocket's path to the plane's path. A rocket's path is sensitive to the plane's attitude, speed changes, and maneuvers at launch, which can make targeting a challenge. The cone of dispersion angle for rocket varies with source, but roughly equates to a radii of around 7 mils for 50% of the strikes. From this 1946 National Defense Research Committee document titled, Analytical Studies in Aerial Warfare, a rocket will be less accurate than a machine gun by roughly a factor of 5. During World War II, pilots attacked targets with rockets by either eyeball aiming or by adopting rules to a standard consistent method of aiming by controlling the variables that affect rocket strikes. The second rocket attack method is called the wing line method. Planes modified to use the wing line method for targeting will have these wing lines painted on the wing's upper surface near the leading edge. If a fighter pilot needs different methods to memorize attacking targets with machine guns, rockets, and bombs, he will be the master of none. The best approach is to learn a simplified, easy-to-learn tactics in attacking ground targets with any of these armaments. The wing line method was developed to provide a simplified, proven method to attack ground targets. The pilot will track and fire the rockets using the plane's machine gun's gun sight. This is an example of wing line stenciled on a P-47. In a high-speed attack dive, the plane accelerates. Rockets need to be released at an effective range, and experience has shown pilot range estimation is unreliable. It is not desirable to find the slant range by instruments while in attack mode. The pilot will initiate the attack run and start counting in his head while maintaining the gun sight pip on the target. When he reaches a preset count duration, he fires his rockets. The key to this method is an accurate count cadence. Let's look at an example. The rocket attack target is here. The Mustang is 3,500 feet above the target. The wing line you use is based on your altitude. At a 3,500 foot absolute altitude, you will focus on wing line 35. You simply align wing line 35 such that its path will intercept the target. Don't fly straight towards the target. Your fighter's nose will obscure the target. This page shows nose visibility limitations of various U.S. fighters. Once the wing's leading edge wing line touches a target, start a diving turn towards a target, like in this image. As you started your diving turn, you will have started counting in your head. 1 1001, 1 1002, 1 1003. These images show the plane's attitude and roll angle during its altitude loss as the counting increases. Given the plane's diving turn, the pilot never loses visual contact with the target. You continue your dive at about 9 seconds finish the rollout. Now, maintain the gun sight pip on the target. Don't look at the airspeed or altitude instruments. When you reach, say, 1-1013, you are within the rocket's effective range. Release the rockets and pull away from the target. This table provides information needed to use the wingline method when attacking in the Thunderbolt. First, set your airspeed based on the altitude above the target. For a 5,000 foot absolute altitude, set the indicated airspeed to 220 miles per hour. Next, fly the plane such that the wingline 50 is on a course to intercept the target. The rocket release pip sight allowance is zero. The rockets will be released 14 seconds from roll initiation. This image shows the wing line parameters for the Mustang and Mustangs in service with wing lines. So how effective were these rockets in their air-to-ground role during World War II? There was a large demand for air-to-ground rockets as discussed on this page from an April 1944 Army Air Services document titled Report on the New Weapons Board. Demand in the European and Pacific theaters cannot be met this year. Rockets have been used in landing operations and against hangars, planes on the ground, boats, personnel, oil tanks, and such. The 5-inch HVARs started service in July 1944. 
As discussed on this page from a December 1944 Combat Operations Department AAF School of Applied Tactics document titled Offensive Fighter Operations in the TAF, their effective range was a thousand yards and a fighter has the equivalent broadside firepower of a light cruiser. This is an example of a light cruiser. The most lethal air-to-ground rocket in the U.S. arsenal is a 5-inch HVAR. It has been effective against armored vehicles, trains, and airfield installations. P-47 initial attack results with these rockets were spectacular. On July 12, 1944, 12 P-47s carrying four rockets each attacked a rail yard and destroyed a flak tower, damaged 25 locomotives, repair shops, and a roadhouse. Other rocket attack examples are listed throughout the article. Rocket fire is deemed more accurate than bombing. Many instances of tanks destroyed by rocket fire. During Operation Market Garden, the rocket-equipped fighters attacked flak batteries, which were in a position to attack the airborne and glider troop transports. If a rocket strikes a tank, it will be destroyed. Dispersion of a rocket projectile is small, so rocket accuracy always comes down to sighting and pilot training. This page from an August 1945 AAF intelligence report titled Flak Neutralization describes rocket attacks against flak installations and batteries. Flak personnel indicated the psychological effect of rocket attacks on their installation was high. A flak neutralization attack started with high altitude bombers to fly over first. This revealed the flak battery locations. P-47s would rocket attack these gun emplacements. The attack started at altitudes of 4,000 feet. The P-47s approached the target at glide angles of 20 degrees and at speeds of 240 knots or faster. Rocket release was between absolute altitudes of 3,500 to 1,500 feet. Long distance machine gun firing occurred prior to rocket release. This is done to throw off the flak gunner's aiming concentration or demoralize the flak crews. As discussed in previous videos, long distance machine gun strafing over the 1,200 foot effective range is allowed for targets shown on this page from a 1945 fighter gunnery training manual. Gun emplacements are acceptable targets for long range strafing. HVAR rockets are credited with sinking destroyer escorts and a full-size destroyer. This page outlines P-51 rocket usage statistics from a 1945 7th Fighter Command on Iwo Jima Statistical Summary document. The months of April through August 1945 are in this column. The number of 5-inch HVAR rockets expended are in this column, peaking in July at 1,141. This table shows the number of Japanese vehicles and structures destroyed, the majority most likely from rocket strikes. This page from a 1998 AIAA conference document titled History of Rocket Motor Research and Development in the Caltech Navy Rocket Program summarizes the significance of the HVAR rockets in combat. General Spots wanted all 9th Air Force's P-47s to be equipped with rockets. The commanding general of the 9th Air Force cabled, We want Caltech rockets. I repeat, Caltech rockets, not Army ordnance. Caltech rockets are the 5-inch HVARs. General Mayers described the Holy Moses rocket as the best anti-tank weapon of the war. Two million five-inch HVARs were manufactured in World War II, and they remain in service ten years after the war. If you've enjoyed this Holy Moses rocket deep dive review, please consider engaging with the video by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.